This is Julian, and I'm here in Amsterdam. And what we're going to dive into here is a segment from Transformation Mastery Live where I talk about getting triggered, okay, having a pain body attack. However, instead of hating when you get triggered and trying to avoid it, I talk about loving when you get triggered and using it to your advantage to identify different suppressed or repressed aspects of yourself. Enjoy. What is a trigger? A trigger is when something takes over. Something that was suppressed or repressed gets poked at and just comes closer and closer into your awareness. Um, it's when your response is disproportionate to reality. Okay, so for example, a lot of us have past trauma when it comes to social situations, putting ourselves out there. You might have spoken up in class as a kid and you got shamed. Maybe your parents told you to shut up. Maybe the teacher told you to shut up. Maybe all your friends and everyone in the classroom started mocking you and telling you to shut up. When that happens, because from your perspective as a kid, the classroom is the world, and if you don't fit in this classroom, you think you're going to die because you can't see beyond it. It's traumatic. You're like, oh my God, everyone's against me laughing at me. Um, I might be kicked out of this classroom. They're all going to turn against me, and I'm going to die. That's what you think. So your survival instinct kicks in, and in order to survive, you just <laughs> try to disown the aspect of you that speaks up publicly, the aspect of you that is loud. Then you live your life that way, and here you are today, and I might tell you to go out and scream in the street. And immediately, just the thought of that <gasps> sparks something up inside of you. Okay. Now, screaming in the street, is that comfortable or no? No, not necessarily. But it shouldn't be so uncomfortable that you freak the fuck out and are just like trembling and can't do it. Your response is disproportionate to reality. You've been triggered. A common one I've been seeing for years with guys when it comes to socializing with women is they've been shamed in the past for liking a girl. And this is super common. You're in school. You like a girl. People find out, you like Susie? Oh my God, everyone, he likes Susie. And everyone starts laughing. They start talking about you. You become the story of the entire school. Traumatic. So what do you say? Let's never let anyone know that I like a girl ever again. That's what you do. And you try to get rid of the part of you, the aspect of you, that likes a girl. And here you are in your adult life, go say hi to her. Can't do it. Now, is saying hi to a stranger comfortable? Not necessarily. But it should not be so uncomfortable that you feel like you're going to die. Your response is disproportionate to reality. Consciously, you know nothing's going to happen. If you walk up to a stranger and you're just like, excuse me, I wanted to say hi. That's it. The world's not going to explode. The worst case scenario is pretty much, um, no thank you and you just walk off, that's it. You're fearing a, um, no thank you. And you fear it like you're gonna die. And I see it on programs, so I'm like, hey, go talk to her, and the guy's like, no, 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 I'm like, come on, and I start pushing him in, and he literally feels like he's gonna fall off a fucking cliff. Consciously, he knows nothing's gonna happen, but something takes over. That's when you're triggered. Another one could be a breakup, where are breakups fun? Do you guys like breakups? Yeah. Anyone here love breakups? No, yeah. they're not fun at all, it's, it's not pleasant. You know, there's a lot of shared history or parting ways. However, it shouldn't be so unpleasant that it runs you for years to come. I know people like 10 years later, 20 years later, still being triggered and obsessing over that fucking breakup. They might even have a new partner now. But if you bring up the name of the previous one, you just sense it. Or they still miss the previous one much more and everything they do is try for the previous one. They're still being run by it. They're still chained by that. Disproportionate to reality in terms of the response, triggered. Okay. Now, because when you're triggered, it's not comfortable. Again, survival instinct kicks in. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Because it's the same survival instinct that kicked in when you were younger when you tried to disown that aspect. Okay. If you're in school, you speak up and the teacher yells you down, be quiet. <gasps> Never be loud again. Survival instinct. Because of that, you've been living your life with more and more dread around being loud. And I'm like, hey, be loud right now. And that same survival instinct kicks in. You're not going to die. It's a bluff, but it feels very fucking real. Okay, so what we do, because it's not comfortable, is we try to design our lives in a way where we avoid getting triggered. Right? This is also why um, back in the day when it comes to interacting with women, um, there was such an appeal, and there still is actually to this day, around, hey, I'll teach you the techniques to talk to a girl, get in a relationship, get a girl, without her even knowing that you're picking her up. I can get a girl without her knowing that I like a girl? <gasps> I don't have to get triggered? 
Because that aspect you do likes a girl is disowned. That's why there's such an appeal. And that's why it's scary for a lot of people to say, hey, I like you. Super fucking scary. Okay. Now, the way I want you to view triggers, instead of this is bad, let's avoid them, is let's use triggers to our advantage. Okay, let's proactively go out and trigger ourselves. Now be careful here because people will fall on the opposite side of the spectrum where they just try to get triggered all the time and then it's just too much to handle. So be smart about this, but triggers can be extremely helpful. Why? Because it helps you identify some of the stuff that's down there, some of the stuff that you've disowned. Okay, the hardest part, you know, one of the hardest parts, let's just say, of letting go is identifying what you want to let go of, what you have to let go of. So let's just say, massive generalization. This, in, in terms of what you're aware of, is your conscious mind. So you're aware of this part of you. You're unaware of all of this. Right now, you're probably aware of me talking here in front of you. If I ask you, hey, what do you eat for breakfast? You weren't aware of it, but now you are. Here at the very bottom are all those traumatic experiences. Say you were loud as a kid, or maybe even before that. Shame for being loud. Not okay to be loud, not okay to express myself publicly. You're gonna store that experience way down here, as far out of your awareness as possible. And then, it doesn't go anywhere, it's still there. Dread accumulates, similar to, I don't wanna check my bank account. Every day that passes, there's more and more dread around checking your bank account, it accumulates. This has been accumulating your entire life. There's more and more dread, more and more layers of resistance. To the point where we don't even know what the fuck is down there. So far, you're aware. So you've done it, so even if you wanted to, you couldn't even remember it because it's too triggering. It's too overwhelming. Survival instinct kicks in. So with triggers, what's good is that it's a sign that can lead you to some of the stuff that's down there. Because when you're triggered, something down here gets poked at and comes a little closer to the surface. It blasts through some layers of resistance, and it's easier, in terms of your awareness, to catch it here than down here. And when you catch it, if you actually stay with the sensations of being triggered and open up to them, let go of your resistance to experience them and sink into it even more, you can trace it back to its source and release all of your resistance around that and finally free yourself from it. And instead of walking around being triggered, now it just becomes Oh, I'm just saying hi to a stranger. There's not that same charge or disproportionate to response to reality behind it. And this is what we're going to do here. We're all going to go out in the real world and do a bunch of social anxiety challenges or social anxiety exercises meant to trigger you. You're going to find a street that has a crosswalk, okay, where people cross the street. Huh? There's the sidewalks here. The group is going to go to one side of the street, okay, so all three of you. And one of you is going to go to this side of the street. And for two minutes, the person who's on this side of the street is going to yell across the street some of the realizations and lessons that you learned today so far. <laughs> Loud enough so that they can hear. And while you're yelling this, they pretend like they don't know you. <laughs> so you're pretty much walking, again, at a crosswalk. There's like the red light. They're all on the other side. And people are like waiting, probably next to you, and just out of the blue. So what I learned at Transformation Mastery Live today is that when you get triggered, it's actually good. And you just keep talking two minutes on stop. <laughs> and while you're doing this, bring some awareness to what comes up inside. Because people will stop, and they will look at you, they will stare at you, and they will judge you. It's going to happen. Like, they're going to walk by. If someone's waiting across the street and the person next to them starts yelling, they're going to be like, like that. And you're going to feel it. Them staring, judging. You're going to feel the social pressure. Don't stop. Just keep talking and bring your awareness to what comes up inside. The sensations. Tune into that. Let it come up. Let yourself get triggered. Okay? It will feel at times like, oh my God, I'm going to die if I do this. I'm going to die. Face fears bluff. It's a bluff. You're not going to die. Let it come up. It's meant to be like, holy shit, intense like that. Okay? Now, few rules here. Two minutes nonstop. 
um, loud enough so the group hears. They have to hear you the entire time. If someone walks by, don't get quiet because I'll see that. So what I learned today, and this is also no, it's like <laughs> keep on going. And no breaks. If you stop talking for more than five seconds, start over. Because that's what else you do. You're talking and someone walks up and then you're quiet. And then you talk again. It's like, no. Non-stop, two minutes. You can't do more than five seconds break. Okay. Um, then you come back. The next person goes. Come back. The next person goes until all of you do this for two minutes. That's the first exercise. And notice, just thinking about this, you're probably getting triggered right now. <laughs> Now, it's crazy how this works, because consciously, you know nothing's going to happen, right? But it's funny how it pokes at something a little deeper within us. OK, so today I have been learning various different ways about how, I've, how I think and how my mindset is going. And I've been really kind of addressing the inner thoughts of my mind. And I've been kind of questioning everything about how I feel. And it started from this journey that I went on to try and pick up women. And as I got further into this journey, it led me to here, to come to Berlin, to really kind of address the inner thoughts within myself. And after processing these thoughts, it's made me think kind of about who I am as a person. And it's made me realize maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was and maybe I could be better, and it's made me question why I'm going on this journey in the first place. Like, what do I plan to achieve? I don't know why I'm doing this. You know, it, it makes me think, what is the point in trying to pick up these women? Like, is it gonna give me the validation that I want? Like, why am I doing it? Why am I doing all of these things in terms of self-help? Why am I putting myself out there? And it's, you know, it's also made me realize that I don't share my emotions enough with the people that I really care about and I suppress my feelings, and I don't let the people that I really like and I really care about know really much about me. And it's really quite eye-opening to realize that I should be more open, and I should address my thoughts. And all of these things that I've put down for my whole life at the bottom of my pool, and that I really should pick them up and share them more and get them off my chest and kind of just experience the whole instead of just the little bit that I think it's okay to share and and it's you know it's liberating to just be to be free of this this shit that holds you down that makes you feel like insecure and then you realize you don't need to feel insecure you can just be who you are you can just be and be happy and you don't need you don't even happy you can just be as you are it doesn't need to be happy it doesn't need to be unhappy you can just I can just be Harry. I am Harry. That's what I am. I'm just there. I am. And I love it. If we're related, we'll meet. So today I feel like I've, I've, I've met my family and everybody else here has also. It's just amazing that something like this exists, that people can share with each other um, what they feel. All the time I felt like it was, there was something missing. I really feel like I'm just addressed all these problems that have been like sitting inside of me. He's given me and everyone else in the room today tools to really let go of the baggage that you accumulate throughout your life. I've been hanging around with people for two years. I have like a stronger connection to some of you right now than I have with them. Now I'm sure that this is the right path.